Now I want to introduce the buzzword CQRS. It stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. And yeah, a long name. It basically says separating the writes from the reads, having two responsibilities for the write side and the read side. And that's quite a simple concept, but the consequences of this are pretty enormous, especially in, in enterprise systems. So, for example, in Java, that means you have a void method do something with potential um, parameters that only is void or throws exception, but nothing else. Or you have a read method get something and that, like a getter, should only return a state and have no side effects. For example, if you take the coffee order story and you have a coffee order service, that gets split up using the CQRS uh, principle into two services, like creating two objects where previously there was one. One um, service for the write side and the other one for the read side. And this goes through your whole system. For example, and now it, it really is a system for um, distributed systems. So that concept really makes sense if um, the concept of CQRS makes sense if you apply event sourcing and event driven architectures together. So in order to do CQRS, you um, need to have event sourcing and you should have the requirement of needing an event driven system. So basically doing microservices, having several um, services. That's a prerequisite. And for example, now you have a command service whatsoever. That is a component in your system. And it has what I call your database that is just an internal storage. It can be a volatile storage in memory that's totally fine. Just some kind of um, storage, some kind of representation of the main objects. And now you do a command because this is the re write side. You say place an order for a coffee order. And now the um, the method gets uh, gets called into the command service, and then what happens? Um, you produce an event be uh, because you apply the command to your current state. For example, you can validate it using your current state, but nothing else. You don't return anything, and if that command successfully um, um, finishes successfully without any exception, then it means it gets accepted and everything was fine. And then, um, as I told you in the eventing um, episodes, you create an event that happened in the past, like order placed. And then this event is published to what we call an event store here. That event store stores, well, the events. It persists the events and it has to be reliable. And then this event stores do, uh, does uh, quite some other things, but that is basically the right side. You get um, a method calls and then you do something and using CQRS, you um, on the applied event driven architecture, you produce events that then get stored into the event store. That's it. And now, of course, that's only half of the story because eventually you want to read everything that you've done. So as I said, you, you have commands, you apply them, you can validate them um, in the current context of the, um, of the called command using the internal representation, the internal storage of your uh, command service, and then just produce the events. And these events then from the event store get published to every consumer and uh, subscriber of these events. That, for example, is the read site. And now you have the same thing on the other side as well. You have a query service with its own representation. That could be an in-memory representation or a materialized view in a database. However, it makes sense to optimize that on what you want to do. And this is reading here. For example, you don't want to normalize the data, but store them as you need them for reading. The easiest thing is an in-memory map. However, the event now gets consumed 
the order has been placed that is immutable and that is in the past the order has been placed you can't change that anymore and now you have an order in your system and the order is there by applying all the events now that is the very first event order placed and then can be something like order cancelled order approved and so on and so forth how your business process looks like and that gets applied to the representation the coffee order namely so first of all you have the order placed so you get an initial coffee order with status created for example that is included in your view and now can be returned on the read side and in theory these two don't interfere with each other they only communicate with, uh, with the event store potentially you could build that using one system or start with one system and then splitting it up if you make sure that they don't the two don't communicate each other with anything else than just the events using the event store or any kind of event storing plus messaging system and that's basically it and then if we want to process that further like you have an order placed and that's it but of course then something should happen to your order then you have to have something like an event handler because the first command place order came from the outside for example using a rest call and then you need to process your order further right so then so one single event handler has to make sure that your placed order now gets processed somehow by calling another method and then ev and everything starts again just that this method is now called from the inside of the system but in theory that doesn't make a difference so you just have to have one event handler that consumes the event that has been published and then calls another command then this gets updated on the command side and eventually another event gets published and the query um, site can update then its internal representation again so however the commands as I said they either produce events internally actually that doesn't matter from the outside from the outside it's just it throws an error or nothing happens like void call fine and then this means if nothing happens that your event um, your command was accepted in HTTP, that would mean 202 accepted, something like that. And then you can rely on, as I said in the last episode, that something happens. So your event is in the system. And as I said, it has to be there reliably. So once you publish it to the event store, this has to happen in one transaction. As I said in the last episode, this is the, um, um, you implement this using several transactions that have to happen reliably but you split them up you split the whole use case of placing an order up to just place the order fine okay I'm done but now I can rely on that the order really is there and then something eventually happens later on but that's fine and if I then go to the um, read side then I eventually see my order it may not be right now because as soon as the event gets consumed right but I know that it will be there eventually. And the query site that reads your order, it only returns the data. No side effects here. It's not allowed to write anything. And as I said before, you can do several um, types of storages, which are then optimized. So for example, a relational database is not optimized for reading, right? But you mostly do reading in your enterprise application. So you could optimize your view, which acts then like a cache, for reading. And as I said, both of these internal storages can be volatile. Because your single source of truth, and the only thing that is transactional here, is your event storage. And these events are, are as I said, immutable, and they are persisted in a, reliably, in a reliable fashion. So either as, even if you throw everything else away, you can reapply the state of your read side and also the internal representation on your right side using the events that are in your system because then um, then the, and this is the approach of the event sourcing the output has to be the same the outcome 
And so you can optimize them using an, uh, an internal cache and then this scales even better. And the events that are updated and uh, this was the event handler, it has to happen only once. So you have to rely on two things that the events get updated to all the consumers to both the read side and the write side if the write side has an internal storage. For example, if you scale your system, um, replicating both sites several times, then all sites have to update their internal representation. That's for sure. But only one event handler um, has to take that. You have to, to make sure that these events are handled only once. Otherwise, you place one order and then the order gets updated several times. You don't want to do that. You only want to handle the um, further processing of that uh, or single event once. And all the others have to be, be called several times. So this is basically the principle of CQRS applied to enterprise systems. And where are the benefits or why do we do that? Besides um, being able to handle with all the complexity that event-driven architectures introduce. Um, first of all, you realize consistency through independent systems in an eventual consistent fashion. You don't have the consistency like uh, CRUD based systems using a single transaction or a distributed transaction for the whole processing. But you can ensure that, as I said, if you place an order it um, and you, um, you get a notification that it um, actually happened successfully, then that the order is there and eventually it gets processed. And at the same time, um, if you think of money transaction, you, you, place a money, uh, you place a money transaction and then one account gets debited and the other one gets credited. And using this approach, you can ensure that you don't create money out of nothing and you don't delete money into nowhere. So the whole system eventually is consistent again at some point in time. It may take some time and um, if you go at one random point in time, then you may see an inconsistent state, but only for now. So for example, for money that you can see one state where one account is uh, debited and the other one hasn't been credited yet, but it will happen. And you can do this in a reliable fashion by splitting up these transactions. And of course you can scale independently because if you um, have, if the reads on your application highly outperform the writes, which is mostly the case, then now using this approach, you can just replicate the read side more often and you can have um, independent views that are updated using the event storage system. And these can be in memory views, for example, or even independent databases. So as I said, it doesn't matter. But if you use a database for the view representation, then it has to be an independent database. You don't share an internal database um, view for several systems, even for several write sites instances. Yes, re sorry, read side instances. And having that said, you can both scale independently the write side or the read side, but just um, replicating them as much as you like and this totally scales and another nice side effect and benefit is that you read side is if it scales independently um, always available even if your write side fails so if your write side is down or if your event storage system is down then you at least can um, be able to read the last update the last update to that um, independent read side system. So that is actually a good, a good benefit, even for um, especially for highly scalable systems, that even if you can't write something, if you for now can't change your uh, system, you're still able to read. And in most of the cases, this helps the users, even if there is a failover. So that's better, better than nothing. And these were in principle the concepts and benefits of the buzzword CQRS.